Hey, Rachel. Hey, how you doing? Excellent. How you doing? This is Jamie Flanagan. And uh, I'm so glad that you uh, could take some time with us. I am a, a high school teacher here in Michigan, and I am uh, teaching a, a summer workshop for entertainment writers. And, and I'm surrounded by a, a gaggle of uh, high school journalists, uh, these young folks here. And uh, we thank you so much for uh, taking some time to, to sit down and, and talk with us. And they're going to throw some questions at you, and uh, I'm going to let them fire away. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, my name is Isaac Baker from Grand Ledge High School, and I was wondering what is it like to be an 18-year-old in an industry saturated with older artists? Um, you know, it's um, it's exciting. You know, to me, I don't see, you know, uh, too much of an age barrier, and, and certainly not an, an excuse. You know, um, to be good or bad. You know, um, if you're a good artist, you have to just be a good artist. You know, you can't be good for 18 or good for. You know, whatever, and it's. Um, I think it's that way in any industry. So, part of the the challenge is to not use your age as a crutch. I think, um, in anything you do, and to strive to be um, good. You know, re- regardless of your age. Um, you know, one of the things that you face being young in this business is you are the youngest person that you work with, um, and you're kind of the boss. You know, of a lot of people that are older than you, and you have to handle your business. You know, so um, you learn really quickly how to run your business and how to be a professional uh, regardless of your age. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, This is Austin Schumann from Grand Haven High School, and I know you have a performance tomorrow at the Grand Ole Opry, but you have actually performed there before, so what did you think that first time going through? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) It is so exciting. Um, It's a huge honor you know and in country music that's like you know that that's the mother church of country music it's a big deal so i've always wanted to play there and um it's a surreal thing to get a phone call that they want you to play and even more surreal to actually get on the stage you know um i played the first time back in march and i'm still really not convinced that it happened and still not convinced that it's happening again tomorrow night (laughs) it's a it's definitely a moment when you walk out in that famous circle and uh, and sing those songs, and you're really just trying to make the most of the short time you have on that stage. All right, thanks. Thanks, Austin. Hi, Rachel. This is uh, Cordero McNair from Last Coast High School North. And um, you tweeted uh, not too long ago that you hit a parked car and you had to leave a <laughs> little sorry note. Uh, is everything fine with that situation? <laughs> I really appreciate your genuine concern. I, I'm, I'm glad you didn't ask that to make fun of me. Uh, <laughs> no problem. So, uh, yeah, yesterday I totally hit a parked car yesterday, and uh, I felt really bad. I've never hit a car before, so I felt really, really bad and had to leave a note. And I was hoping that in leaving a note they'd be like, oh, that was so nice and honest and wonderful, and we won't call her. We'll just, we'll just pay for it. It's fine, but that didn't happen. <laughs> so, yeah, um, everything's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my insurance company will deal with it, and I'll just pay for more expensive insurance now. But thank you. Thank sure, you for yeah, your concern. You. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Bobby uh, Mitchell from Grand Ledge High School, and uh, I heard your first show didn't go well. And uh, did this have any <laughs> influence on you at the time? As in, did it deter you from wanting to do more shows or performing? Uh no, it did the opposite, you know, because I, I love playing and whatever, you know, and I, I knew it was going to be tough because I'd never done it before, and I didn't know enough music to even fill up the two-hour set that I booked, you know. So uh, I knew it was going to be difficult, and I made it work, and it, you know, things like that, when things go wrong, it makes you, you know, it makes me want to work harder. So, you know, in doing that, that was my first gig, and um, the next year I played 100 gigs. And, you know, you, you learn how to, you know, improv. And, you know, shows are never going to go flawlessly. You know, nothing is ever going to run the way you think it's going to. And um, so one of the important things in, in performing and um, entertaining in general is knowing how to roll with punches and taking anything that can go wrong, whether it's in your control or out of your control, and making it part of the show and, and knowing that it's okay, you know, and then 
it happens and, and not to let it, you know, ruin the whole show or get you down or, you know, ruin you even wanting to do it as a career, you know. The best thing you can do is make a joke out of it and move on. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thanks. Hi, this is uh, AJ Prisandero from Rochester High School. And I was wondering what uh, musical artist you idolized growing up or uh, who inspired you? Um, some of the people that have inspired me you know, my whole life, uh, Pink is a huge one. I'm a huge fan of Pink, and I think she's absolutely incredible as a vocalist, a writer, a performer, just an all-around artist. She's amazing. Um, I grew up listening to, you know, of course, country music and, and all kinds of music, really. So um, people like the Dixie Chicks and Martina McBride were a huge influence on me, and, Everyone from people like that to Joan Jett and Guns N' Roses and, um, you know, um, pretty much anybody that I come across that um, that I enjoy their music or, you know, I, I try to take something away that I can apply in, in my own music. Cool, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Rachel. My name is Diamond Ledford from Cass Technical High School. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. I just wanted to ask, um, Ashley Cook on Rough Stock said that your new single, Ain't Easy, was a raw and edgy sound. Would you like all of your music to be described as this? And would you like to be labeled as a country singer in view of the common practice of crossing over? Uh, okay, so the uh, first question is a raw and edgy, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, I think that kind of touches on uh, the way, you know, my music is. Um, I, I like the word raw, you know, because I... I don't like being fabricated. I'm not uh, much of a fabricated person. Um, you know, I, I'm very honest with, with myself, you know, even in front of people. So um, I like the word raw being used to describe my music, and I think hopefully that is, you know, accurate. No matter what kind of style I put on my music, I still think it's kind of raw and edgy. Um, uh, I'm sorry, what was the other question? Um, would you like to be labeled as a country singer in view of the common practice of crossing over? I am totally not opposed to crossing over. You know, for me, um, I am not out to, I guess, intentionally, you know, when I put out a country record, I, I don't intend on, you know, it crossing over. But I'm not opposed to it. You know, I don't see, I don't see genre lines, really. You know, to me, being creative is about not seeing lines. It's about blurring those lines. And that's what being creative and being an artist is all about. If you're doing what everyone else is doing, then you're not really contributing, you know. Um, so, you know, I'm certainly not afraid of becoming, you know, a, a crossover if that should happen. Thank you so much. Thanks. Hey there, uh, my name is Sean Vichinsky. I'm from Divine Child High School. Um, a lot of our artists these days, um, I want to say Amy Winehouse and, Wincy, and Wincy, Lindsay Lohan, um, uh, those kind of people, they down, down the road, they become washed up and they eventually lose their, 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 their staying power within the uh, industry. Is that something that you're afraid of doing down the road? I am personally not afraid of it um, because for me, I view my personal life, uh, my relationships with my family and, and those very close people to be insanely important to me. Um, so as much as I love my career and, you know, I, I would never put the brakes, you know, I, I don't want to put the brakes on, on, you know, limiting how much success I could have or how big or not big it could get, you know. At the end of the day, the most important thing in your life is the people who have loved you from the very beginning and the people who are there for you, you know, with or without success, with or without money, with or without fame. And I think what happens to a lot of people is you end up being surrounded by what we call yes people. You know, it's people who don't want to lose their jobs, you know, and they know that you have money, you have the power. And so they just kind of give you what you want. And, you know, I think a lot of these people – a, they don't have people who will step in and say, hey, you need to put the brakes on this or you need help or, you know, we need to take a break. You, you don't need to be acting like this. You know, you're not being yourself. Or they push those people away because they have so many people telling them yes that in their minds the people that are actually taking care of them, you know, are, are wrong. Um, so I think it's a really dangerous place to get, and I think it's important to keep the perspective 
that the people who loved you before the same, you know, are oftentimes the people who love you with it and the people who are going to come to you and say, hey, you know, you, you need to cool it. You know, those those are the people, you know, probably the people who piss you off the most are probably the people that uh, <laughs> you need to keep close. So, uh, you know, I really try to keep a good perspective on who really is important and who's in it for the job at the end of the day. All right, thanks. Hi, yeah, this thank is, you. Hi, this is Sarah Pristavo from Winmore High School in Wynn Westland. I was wondering, how did you find the strength to continue re- writing and singing when your father passed? I... You know, through that whole process, I never, one thing that, you know, I never quit was, was music. We, we made it work. My dad was super supportive and super proud of me and never wanted his illness and his struggle to get in the way of that. Um, so he always made it possible for me to continue playing. And, um, you know, one of the last things he said to me before I passed away was to write him a song. So I did, and it's on the record, and I'm, I'm super proud of it. And, uh, but, uh, you know, we I played my first show after my dad passed away, uh, let's see, it was two days after his funeral, um, I played my first show. And, um, no, I'm sorry, a day. It was the next day after his funeral. We went down to South Georgia and we had a gig. And, and we just kept it because, you know, it, um, it, it, it's hard, you know, especially to lose someone that close to you. You know, you can't replace a parent or a spouse or a child. So... You know, losing someone like that affects your whole life for the rest of your life. But at the same time, your life isn't over, you know, so you have to keep going. And it's a lot easier if you force yourself to kind of jump back into life, you know, than it is to um, to wait and kind of get in the habit of not doing it anymore and, and allowing yourself to just sit there and, and be sad, you know. Actually, I, <laughs> I was on stage for the first time the night he passed away. I, I went and... Um, spent some time with my friend um, Brantley Gilbert and uh, he had a show that night and, um, it was a writer's round in Athens Georgia and they brought me up and I sang a song and I will tell you it was the greatest three and a half minutes I've ever spent on stage because everyone in that room a room full of strangers knew that my dad had passed away that morning and I saw how many people genuinely cared you know how many people that I didn't know you know the looks on their face you could tell they genuinely cared about me so being on stage actually gave me more strength than I ever could have imagined. Um, do you think, what would you think um, your dad would have said or like would have told you before you did that or like how, what do you think he would think of you now since you're so like you got, you know, greater than you were before? Uh, my dad would have told me sing loud and don't suck. <laughs> that was, that's what he told me before every show, sing loud, don't suck. <laughs> So, Rachel, do you have any uh, pre-show rituals that you do? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, um, I warm up. Uh, I warm up before every show, and I cool down after every show because you got to take care of your vocal cords. They are muscle. Um, and then my band and I, each each band member, I, we have our own little fist pump that we do uh, before the show. And then we have what we call we like to call it the band prairie because it's not like the band Perry. Um, and we're stupid like that, but it's, we have a, we do a band prayer before every show. We kind of huddle up and bring it in together and have a prayer, and then we put our hands in and we pick a word and we yell a random word, usually an inappropriate word, really loudly. <laughs> so those are kind of our pre-show rituals. Very cool. All right, so here's here's a question for you: uh, past or present, uh, if you were creating a festival lineup of you and five other bands, who would be on that bill? Oh, my gosh, that's amazing. Okay. Um, okay, five other artists. Well, I guess first I had to pick Brantley Gilbert because he's a great friend of mine, and so he has to be in the lineup. Um, then I would pick Pink, um, Joan Jett, um, Matchbox 20, and ooh, one more. This is tough. All right, so wait, we have Brantley, Pink, Joan Jett, Matchbox 20, Probably Alanis Morissette. Wow, right on. I want to go to that show. Me too. Make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, Rachel, thanks so much for uh, taking some time with these young journalists. This story uh, is going to appear um, 
on some of their online publications and uh, hopefully in print when school kicks back in. Uh, we'll get you some links to it when it comes out. But is there anything else uh, you would like to, to, to say to this audience or, or say to these uh, young journalists? Yeah, um, good luck. Good luck with whatever it is you're wanting to do in, in, in journalism. You know, I know it's kind of a broad, a broad thing, but, um, you know, um, good luck. Do what it is that you love to do. Say what it is that you want to say. Um, I know there's a business aspect to it, and we all have to kind of follow certain guidelines. But at the same time, don't be afraid to blur lines, and don't sacrifice yourself or anything. Whatever business you get into, know who you are, and know that it's okay to be exactly who you are. And uh, go out there and, and uh, do your thing and enjoy it. Have fun. All right. You've uh, quoted Robin Thicke twice now. <laughs> have I? Yeah, I'm just, te- I'm just teasing you. It's Blurred Literally, Lines. Never mind. All right. Oh, Blurred Lines. Yeah, yeah there totally. you go. I love that song. So <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, you want it. <laughs> all right, Rachel. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. I appreciate uh, it. All right. Be well. All right. Bye. Granddad a real moon shine till the day he died. Left behind his children and a forty-five. 